Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This time brought to you by Card Market, the best platform to purchase your favorite physical cards, but also the best platform to sell your cards. Today we'll be talking about sideboarding, sideboarding with my bag control deck. Okay, and we'll be not talking about only the numbers, there will be numbers, but the reasons and the logic behind the numbers, why I'm sideboarding, do I am sideboarding. And also, in the description below, you'll have all the appropriate links to Card Market, but also to my article on how to sideboard with control decks in general, my article, or my bug primer on this deck, which is also on the Card Market website. Uh, and please stay until the end, there will be a, a competition for welcome five dollar five euro coupon. So if you are a new um, a new user on card market or not yet um, a user, please stay until the end. Now let's begin uh, with sideboarding. So I've got this. So this is a deck. This is roughly the deck. This is the sideboard, and I have ten ish matchups I want to go through. Okay, let's begin with Amulet. Tight, okay, the first the first matchup and let's talk about ins and then let's talk about outs Okay, when we think about a sideboarding against Amulet Titan and that a few flavors now There is also like a vile typish version, but in general in general I think this is the the five card package you really want to focus on. Okay, Alba um, Ether Gust helps against um, The Dryad hey, helps against Primeval Titan which, if, even if it's uncountable, doesn't really matter that much. And Ashiok, obviously, great against uh, the tutor effects, like Summoner's Pact, Tolaria West, like uh, Primeval Titan itself. So, and it really shuts down their engine. So if you slam Ashiok, then they can, then you, they can actually do whatever they want on the untap, because you won't really care. Sometimes out of sideboard, you've got threats such as Tireless Tracker, which Ethergust tags as well. So... For me, it's an easy five in. Now the question is, what five do you cut? And I think it's not that obvious, but Cryptic's excellent, Jace is okay, Fawn is good for multi-spelling, counter-spell. Uro, actually, actually, you could argue, Uro is not that good, but I think Uro is very important against the Field of the Dead plan. So actually, if you look at the whole deck, my decision, my cuts, would be three cling and two push, okay? Because you will see this pattern in the video later, but I will be cutting cling whenever whenever gaining life is irrelevant and exiling cards is irrelevant, okay? Because then it's because then the card is one mana draw a card, which is absolutely not what you want to be doing, right? So, um I will be very liberal in cutting cling. It's a great, excellent game one card, but even but but yeah, I can cut it even every matchup. But doesn't mean it's not a great game one card, and it is a great game one card. And pushes, for example, push tags, um, push tags, dryad with revolt, tags the the snaky thing, and but you can't have too much removal, you know. So like you can say, okay, they've got Snake, they've got Dry, they've got Azusa, right? Sure, but then they've got still, I've got still got Decay, I've got the Counter Spells, and I've got the Gust, and still the, the pushes. So I think I will trim the pushes and cut to Clings, and that would be Amulet Titan. Obviously, if you have any questions about anything, just just ask them in the comments below. Second matchup, Dredge. Okay, Dredge, and yeah, as you can, I will show you. This is the the cheat sheet I will be showing you later. Uh, which will be in the description box um, below. Dredge. Okay, again, let's start with ins. So, you have to ask yourself if it's absolutely obvious, but I think it is obvious-ish that you want this assortment of cards. Okay, three gas, two Ashiok, two Surgical. Actually, I can see I've got a, I've got a, um, something wrong in my notes. Okay. So, I will bring in these seven cards. Now, Surgical and Ashok are self-explanatory. They're just graveyard hate. And to be honest, I think with this version, you've got an excellent dredge matchup. You've got two Surgical, two Ashok, three Kling, three Fawn, and Uro engine. Really difficult for dredge to, to, to beat that. So, this is a kind of self-explanatory. But Ethergas, I think Ethergas is very powerful because it deals with Haggle as the engine card. It deals with Reunion, which is an engine card, and it deals with the, the Ox, 
which is an engine card, you know? So, and it also deals with conflagrate. So I think for all these reasons, I think Gust is very good. What I would cut, is I would cut all the pushes. Basically, I would cut these cards, okay? So removal. Counter spells actually are actually pretty powerful against Dredge because they can't just not do stuff. Like they have to keep casting spells because previously they could just naturally keep dredging every turn, literally doing nothing and passing, and we'd be dead. But now with Uro, they actually have to have much more velocity and power, and so they have to have they have to cast like a reunion. They have to cast and cast a Nox, for example. And if you, for example, phone their engine and they have you've got a mana leak for whatever else comes up. They won't be able to to go to 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 beat an Uro that easily, and Uro is the the one of the most powerful cards. Now we cut the removal because that's not what we're interested in really. Because if they're having graveyard cards, that's why you've got the clings. That's how why you've got the surgicals and the Ashioks, right? And even if they bring back what, like uh, you know, two amalgams and something, you're just trying to not to die, and you're just you no, know, you're just u Uroing, just naturally Uroing. Gain three life, they attack you for, I don't know, seven, nine, twelve, doesn't matter because you're still alive. And then you keep playing your game, right? At one point you'll just escape, escape Uro and you're golden. So I think that's, I mean, obviously there is much more to that, but that's not a sideboard, you know, that's not a match analysis guide, it's a sideboard guide. So this is the seven I would cut and this is the seven I would bring in. Monoret Prowess. Monoret Prowess. Now, I, I will leave gusts here because they will very often be brought in. That's it, Monoret Prowess, only three Gust. Now, because again, that's also self-explanatory, it's much easier to side cards in, because they are very narrow, so you know when to play them. It's much more difficult to cut cards. Now, in this situation, obviously, removal is excellent. So what I would actually, actually, I've differentiated between um, two different approaches. So I think, so there are people who cut fonts against Prowess at X and people who don't. And I think both approaches are valid. Cutting fawn would suggest that you, you, you like people who don't can f cut for uh, no people who cut fawn like I've done very often is just you feel like there is nothing in particular that you would like to fawn because you focus on the creatures anyway so like what are you fawning really you're not fawning crash through you're not really fawning a bolt you might consider fawning a manamorphose or might consider fawning a light at the stage. And that's the counter argument. So while there is a lot of the cards which you don't fawn because you can't or you don't want to, you've got the Manamorphose and the Light of the Stage, which would be really nice to fawn to keep you, you know, afloat because they're very fast. So I think both approaches are fine. So now if you keep fawns in, I would cut Mana Leaks. Okay? Or even, or maybe like one Deprive and two Mana Leaks. Okay? Because mana, because the prize is basically a late game card. Now, if you if you are on the cut fawn plan, you just leave mana leaks in, right? And, and I I would I would just keep this strategy, okay? And I think that's kind of some people, for example, would not touch fawn or mana leak, or they would just just deal with the top end. For example, they would just kind of uh, cut some of these, and that's fine. But I think in this version, which has happened plenty of times to me. If they happen to surgical the Euros, it's literally, it's very tough to win. I mean, f to physically close the game. So I really don't want to cut the Jaces. Um, I really don't. So you could trim all Cryptics, sure. But I think against a non-blue prowess deck, which doesn't interact on the stack, it allows us to really kind of maneuver the combat and just not get attacked when we wish not to be. So I personally stay, stick with the fawn or league deprived plan, and there is this there is a this tendency that I mean to be okay, there's one more thing. On the play, I would almost I would very willingly cut fawns for the sake of leaks, because Counter magic is much better on the play, like a mana leak. But on the draw, I would get rid of that as soon as I can, as soon as I can. So there is an argument to, for example, keep all of them in on the play. If, for example, cut like these three, also fine. Again, I think there are a few approaches. Just see what works best for you. I also used to cut a field of ruin against monoret prowess decks. 
but I don't have a field over it, and I really don't want to cut a um, colorless source. But then it made sense because the game still revolved on you having two or three lands because the game was very, very fast and, and condensed, and the field of ruin was basically a waste. Uh, but now in this version, um, I would not do that. But I so so yeah, a few approaches I would cover. I will cover all of them in the um, in the docs document. Etron. Etron, I think, is very easy, so I won't spend too much time on that. Etron is the one matchup where we don't side in Gust, but I would side in three rejection. Only, just want, I want to say one thing: we are not playing surgical, and you would not surgically their lands because Etron works more as a mid-range deck slash aggro depends on their draw. So because they have a bit of a more aggressive draw, reshaper, TK, smasher, a bit more controlling draw like Chalice, Tome, you know, Planeswalker, or something in between, you know? And if you trophy them and surgical them, you've spent two cards to let's to probably not do anything. Because if you trophy a Tron land, you've got a land changes into a land, so if they're, it's, they're turn three, they will still have three mana. So they will just continue the usual fair plan. Okay, you could also trophy a, 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 a Drazi Temple, but again, that's still the point. Green Tron will have a, their hands, you know, stuck with six drops, seven drops, eight drops, ten drops, but not each one. Okay, so it, so the dynamic is different, and I would like you to remember that. So I will. I'm cutting rejection. Now, I want removal for the creatures. Decay and trophy are great catch-alls. Mana leaks are, are great against you know different you know different threats also fun because they've got a different assortment of threats. That's why it's a passable deck. Because you've got non-creature and creature threats which are which are scary. So in this matchup, if you've been following me, you know I've got an inclination to for example trim and opt. Because it's a it's a card which in itself doesn't affect the game and, and it's very bad in the face of a chalice. And with that in mind, I'll be cutting three clang. One, it works poorly with a chalice. Two, they don't even fetch, so I can't even eat their fetch lands to draw cards. I would need to draw my eat my own spells. And life life gain doesn't matter, and the graveyard doesn't matter. So they've got plenty of reasons why cling is very very lackluster. So I really really don't want cling. So three in, three out, three in. Green Tron, however, Green Tron is a bit different. Now we are adding surgical because we we're changing the plan. We're changing the plan, and we now want to surgical they, 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 they land. So, worst case, surgical is just surgical, I don't know, cans, but preferably it would be trophy your land, surgical, as like a nut draw, so to speak. What we're cutting, that's kind of easy, I would say. Against green tron, we're just cutting for pushes because they're literally dead, and I will also cut a decay. So, that, so it's a bit different than against green e-tron because cling here is, is actually key that it draws a card. Because it's a, it's much more of a race, okay? Against each one, an escaped Uro is a powerful threat, not so much against Green Tron, okay? Ud Uro against against uh, Green Tron is more of a lock piece with Cryptic, so the dynamic is different, okay? So against Green Tron, I have to be fast. I have to I have to have turn to Mana League. I have to have a phone up, and so on and so on. So I think Kling is much better because I will just literally go fetch eat my fetch and just to keep going, just to cycle, just to go through my deck because they will punk me out turn three and I don't want that to happen. In fact, okay, now let's go to in fact. Let's, let's come back to our usual plan, three gust in because it tags uh, all their bounce spells, high rock, glistener elf, no, again, become immenses, veils, post board. So I want my gust. Uh, and I, what I'm cutting, so again, I'm cutting cling because life doesn't matter and the graveyard basically doesn't matter. I'm not going to, I don't want to spend a mana to just eat a card to hopefully make their becoming man smaller. And all the other cards are very powerful. I mean, mana leaks again, on the draw maybe not, but on the play certainly, you, you, you know. Also they might play like a Teferi version. Three mana to fairy version, band version, then the mana lake is even better. So yeah, three cling, three. Gust. Blue White Blade. Blue White Blade. So that was difficult. Because I knew right off the bat that this would be 
the in. I knew this would be the, the in. But what to cut? And I was thinking about it. And uh, because this is the, the pro the problem is that I want both spells and anti-creature spells. Against blue eyed control would be much much easier because you'd be just trimming on on pushes. But here, it's kind of no. They don't have that many friends, but they've got sharks. They've got the the, the stone forges. But on the other hand, this also tags them, like decay trophy tags the, the threats and the equipment. So in the end, I've decided to go for uh, minus three cling again. Life total doesn't matter. Graveyard matters ish because of their snap custom mages, potentially, but I just, um, I think, I just think that's one of the weakest cards. And I'm also cutting one cryptic because post board they will have probably you know, a number of disputes, maybe spell pieces or something, so it's a bit of, a bit clunky. And one push because, yeah, I, I would, I still have, you know, six pieces, seven pieces of removal, you know, so I'm just trimming a push. I could see cutting an Ange Mage's Charm, but Charm uh, takes control of the Shark and also works better if we go with the pass the turn control game plan. So, this would be the 5 out and this is the 5 in. Next matchup, Goblins. Goblins, okay, Goblins has, has, has fallen off the map a little bit, but in Ethergast. That's why some people are thinking about playing it main deck. I used to actually play one copy main deck. Um, so three gust in, and what we're cutting? Now we're not cutting cling actually, and 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 so you can say, why wouldn't we be we be cutting cling? It's life total kind of matters, but they're either comboing off or probably c or grinding us out. And the graveyard is irrelevant. Why would I keep clinging? I'm completely um, inconsistent. So, to, so, wait, wait. My counter argument to that is yes, but maybe there are worse cards. In this case, there are. Force of Negation is worse than cling because this at least is a draw card and this is basically dead. So I'll be cutting three fawn for three Ethercast. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Green White Druid Devastation. So Druid Devastation is an interesting deck. Um, it's different from the previous like Coco Knight of the Reliquary decks because now it's way more focused, which means it's way more deadly, but also it's way more linear, and we, I want to take advantage of that. So the way I'll be taking advantage of that, let me check with my notes if I remember correctly. I do. That would be the in. And so the reason is that if oh, obviously if a gust tags the whole deck. Now I know I will need to kill the druids as they come. I might as well surgical them out, because again their plan is super focused, and then they will have to win with like two one creature beats. Right, which is an unrealistic in the face of like Uro and just full of removal Jace deck. Uh, Ashiok, Ashiok stops the devastation, stop, stops the Code of Callings if they have them. Uh, so I think so. It's like probably like eight-ish cards. I don't know. I don't know if they play. Oh, uh, Eldamri's Call. So that's potentially twelve. I don't know the exact numbers that they play, but it stops plenty of their cards, the the, the search cards. That's why Ashiok. What I'm cutting. What I'm cutting. Is, is interesting, I think, because in this matchup, I thought, you know, I want to play to the board. I can all be almost be a tap out control deck. Car advantage is barely, barely matters because they will just focus on the, the druid thing, and along the, and alongside with it, they will keep drawing like two, two, two one for two, two ones for two. So I was thinking how, how to approach it, and Eventually, I decided I'm cutting cling, and you no, know, you could think to keep in cling because they could have like a post-mortem lunge. But on the other hand, again, you can't keep. You no, know, obviously, cling will have applications. That's why it's good. But you can think of just you no know, cutting cling and bringing in surgical for that same purpose. You can surgical in response to the lunge, or you can just form the lunge. So I'm cutting the clings, 
And I also have decided, I don't know if rightfully so, but I've decided to do to cut this. Okay, so this would be the seven. So the reason is that life gate doesn't matter and card advantage barely matters, you know? Because we can just keep playing one for one. And I still have this because you know, remember I play four scour, so and I keep drawing cards, so I really see a lot of my deck. And one row is probably enough. And I'm keeping fonts, so if they have their paths, which they might, post board, I've got the defense. And cryptic because it's you know, it's four mana. And it's difficult to trade it positive on tempo. Uh, and you can say, okay, if they play Devastation for four, sure, or for, for two or whatever, but then I've got the Ashiox to deal with that and the Ether Gust. So basically the card advantage would still come from Uro, from Jace, from Snap, from Archmage's Charm and from Sanctuarying these things. So I think I would just cut these seven cards and no, wa no, no, no not worry. Uh, so that's Devastation, Dread, Jond. Now, let's talk about a few things. So this is an obvious in, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Gust tags, Ren, Goif, Ooze, K Command, Bloodbraid Elf. When they play Bloodbraid Elf and they Cascade, you can Gust the Bloodbraid in response to the Cascade. So it blanks the whole thing. Mm. You can gust, I don't know, a tracker, a boil, a choke, just you name it. And Veil, again, also excellent, especially on the play. On the draw, depends, but some, some junk players prefer waiting with their discard spells to clean the way, so you've got Veil there. You also have Veil to protect your Uro from Lily Minus, or just in general to protect your Uro from whatever. Protect your Uro from... Um, Mm, your Uro or Jace from like Trophy or Decay or okay, K Commands or whatever. Now what to, what to cut? And I was thinking about, so in general my rule of thumb is that against this kind of discard value or discard I will kill your decks. I'm cutting Fawn because Fawn is unreliable and they're poking hole in my hand so if I keep a, a reasonable 7, 3 lands, 4 spells and one of the spells is Fawn. So basically, three lands, three spells. And it, let's even assume all of them are blue and they take one of the spells. I phone something, I've got literally one thing to work with. That's not the spot I want to be in. Uh, so I'm cutting phone. And actually, I th after thinking about it just a bit more, I've decided that on the draw, I would cut these because uh, on the draw, they will, they will again, I dislike mana leaks on the draw, and and on the draw mana leak can basically tag a Liliana, and that's the only thing I would care about. While on the play, I would keep leaks, uh, because it's much much better, and I would cut to cling. St still cutting at the price though, but but cutting to cling, because again it has applications, but not that many, right? It can care, it can eat a Croxa. It can kill in and eat a K, K command target, but in, even then, it gains you life and not draws a card, which is not something you'd really like. So again, on the play, I'm leaving leaks in and cutting two cling, one deprive. Uh, you could even cut three cling. Again, sideboarding is kind of fluid, and on the draw, I would cut the counter spells and the fonts. Humans against humans. Actually, I'm only sideboarding in three veil. I don't have any good cards against humans, but I think Veil is the best one because it protects my Uro from being Reflectimaged. It protects me from being Kite Sail Freebooted. And the list kind of ends. But I think it's still better than some of the cards in the deck. However, I really wouldn't blame you for just submitting the same 60. Okay? And you can say, okay, so why don't you have a better cyborg against humans? And the, the answer would be. That's complicated, because the deck is well suited to beat it as is. I've got seven removals, I've got seven, eight pieces of removal spells, right? And snap, Uro, and I've got, I really have a lot going on. But my anti-creature spells are basically ghasts here. Okay, so, you, so, but, but what, if you have, and also, humans are on the deck line, right? If they and and I don't feel like I've got a problem with humans. However, and and okay. 
However, if you see an uptick in humans and you'd like to adjust a bit more, I would just add two EE to my sideboard, engineered explosives. I wouldn't cut domination, I wouldn't add domination because explosives can also come in against junk, can also come in against pawns on the play, can also come in against prowess. Domination though, iffy iffy, okay, it's very ish. Okay, so if you want to be prepared to get a bit better, for example, you want to cut to surgicals because you think they are narrow, which they are, sure, cut to surgical, add to add to EE, and then you'll be a bit better. Now, what you're cutting for these three veils potentially again, if anything, <sighs> two approaches, I think. You can either cast, uh, cut the phones, or you can cut the counter spells, or you can cut the clings. Now, you can keep in phones because you're thinking, okay, I really want to tag the, 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 the vial and then I will easily win, okay? You can say I'm cutting this because if they have a cavern, I'm, I'm screwed, fair enough. Or you can cut cling because the, if they're killing you, I think, they're not killing you by slim margins. And if they've got all creatures, cling doesn't draw a card, so it's one mana gain three, which is not the best, you'd have to eat your own graveyard, but Uro is key to escape. So I wouldn't fault you to do any of these approaches, okay? That's why I'm giving you kind of an option, because I think, again, sideboarding is very fluid. Um, choose your own path. Three more matchups. Burn. Just three gust in, just three gust in here. And I will be cutting. What will I be cutting? Actually, everything seems excellent. So burn is this matchup where I'm just kind of trimming. I'm trimming edges, I'm trimming a cryptic, and I'm trimming a charm. Just a bit trimming off the top of my curve, you know? That's it, because everything else is excellent. I really want removal for the creatures. I want counter magic for a no Boros Charm, because remember they will operate on two or three lands. If they draw five lands, it's good anyway. Uh, so just trimming off the top bit. Ponza, three gust in. Now the dynamic is, is a bit different, so I'm cutting three cling again because the basically the only application of cling is eating the, cl the clothes target, but it's a very poor and narrow use, okay? And and if the if and they will want to eat Uro with our clothes, they want to eat our Uro with their clothes. So you would spend a cling to just gain three? Nah, no, 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 thank you. Three cling out, three gust in. And the last matchup, Shadow, Jan Shadow. So I want to draw a very quick comparison to the Jand Jand, because in is the same. But the out is different. So there I cut fonts, and here I do the same, because again they will just poke a, a bit into my hand and and actually actually if anything you should you should keep fonts against Jund and not here. I mean don't keep them against Jund. But against Jund it at least tags a planeswalker. But here, why? This card spell? Maybe a battle rage, hopefully, kind of hopefully. Uh, and I cut leak and deprive package here. Right, cut leak and uh, and so you would say, what's the difference? It's exactly the same sideboarding. No, 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 no. The difference is, I'm not bringing in mana leak on the play, and I and I and I, and I decide not to do it because on the play against 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 Junt, I can counter two drop, a three drop, maybe a four drop. Junt Shadow plays one drops, maybe two drops, like a Tarmogoyf, right? And I don't want to kind of keep my fingers crossed to hopefully tag a Lurus. So Mana Leak is, is just never good, right? Uh, you could also go do this, but again, I prefer to have an actual turn to interaction, so that, that's why I'm cutting the Deprive. So yeah, that would be that would be my walkthrough. That would be my walkthrough. Um, let me know how you if you like this this format. If you like just just know listening. To the thoughts, uh, because again, you will still be provided with a written sideboard guide, and you will also be provided with a written primer. Okay, so please let me know if you like this kind of um, material. And thank you also, thanks to Card Market for sponsoring this video, for making it happen. Again, all the links in the description, and now the competition. If you are new, if you are a new Card Market user, or not yet a Card Market user, I've got a question to you. Please put it in the comments below on YouTube, what do you like the most about Magic the Gathering right now? 
would you like the most? I will, I've got eight, eight coupons, so uh, plenty to go around. I'll, I will choose the best answers and I will contact you directly and provide with the coupons. So yeah, thank you very much for today. And as always, hold my hand. Let's pause the turn together and see you next time. Cheers.